Welcome to another episode of Being Lab. I am Gonzalo Cordova, your host and executive and ontological coach, also a conversational strategist. Happy to have you here on this new episode. I am Gonzalo Cordova, and this is Being Lab, conversations that transform the way you see the world. So welcome, and today we're going to talk about the topic, hanging out with insufficiency. I have a surprise for you at the end of this episode. I am going to read a very powerful, I would say, poem. Um, it's, a, it's a reading, a poem that was given to me many years ago, back in 2003, I believe, by one of my most amazing teachers and coaches. His name is Bob Donham, which, by the way, he has a phenomenal book called um, Innovator's Way. It's a read that I do recommend if you work with teams and are wanting to create new patterns and possibilities, do so. Read it. So it's called Innovator's Way by Bob Donham, Robert Donham. Anyway, so going back to today's topic, hanging out with insufficiency, I would like to begin by stating the obvious. One of the things that we don't see often, actually seldom, is our own culture. Because it's easier to see someone else's culture. Ours becomes transparent, invisible. But many times, the measure of success, feeling full, fulfillment, feeling like you achieve, is not other than your own culture. Let me repeat that again. I think it's an important statement. So, our culture determines and measures our level of feeling sufficient, feeling enough that we accomplished. Many times, I can say 99% of the time is not us. It is that pattern that cultural discourse that was already, by the way, waiting for us when we were born. It doesn't matter where you were born. Each country, society, uh, language, and company has different levels or measurements for success. And so that begs the question. So if I am carrying a measurement for sufficiency that is not mine, then who's winning and who's losing? And I love that idea, the idea of challenging, not getting rid of, but challenging our culture for the sake of perhaps finding new ways to relate to being sufficient, being enough. Not only that, also, there is this very challenging idea of being worth, worthy. Particularly here in the U.S. where I live, I hear in a lot of executives and people from all sorts that knowing and embracing their worth typically is either challenging to truly achieve or experience, or it is only recognized through financial or economical success. And that alone, it's a challenge in itself. It's a big challenge because that means that if I don't reach to a certain number, and my bank account 
doesn't have those many zeros, then I automatically not worth it or not enough or not successful. And yes, I think part of life, it's fine to achieve those material things, which is we're going to talk about it in a minute. But there's other things. There are other things that can also give a lot of worth and sufficiency rather than economical achievements. So as you can see, culturally speaking, we've been measuring success and failure with literally like a measuring tape that we don't challenge, that we just follow. And for a lot of people, without knowing that, it's very, it is very tiring and unachievable. So I would love for us to move from insufficiency to learning to be or become enough. Otherwise, if we continue following the typical ratios or standards for success and failure, the ones from our culture, then you don't know when is enough or what is enough. Actually, no matter what you do, it's never going to be enough. I don't know if you've noticed. I'm sure that when you were a teenager, you wanted a bike, a bicycle, and then you got it. And then all of a sudden you wanted a car and you got it. And then all of a sudden you wanted a motorcycle and then you got it. And then you wanted another car or an RV or a whatever else or a boat. And then it's never enough. So we have to be able to declare at some point in a very conscious and mindful way what is truly enough and when it is truly enough. But remember, the example I just gave you about the, you know, bike, bicycle, car, boat comes from that culturally, cultural, cultural discourse that we a lot of us fall into by default, without questioning, without asking, without asking ourselves, wait a second, is that so? Is that going to give me, give me at the end of the day, when I put my head on the pillow, is that going to make me feel sufficient, fulfilled, enough? Think about eating. For a lot of people, knowing when you feel satisfied is invisible, particularly when you go to restaurants or you are on vacation and you see the buffet table, you can have it all because it's prepaid or not. And then people can keep eating without listening to your body that, okay, I think this, this was enough for plates so far, should be plenty, but we can keep going. Why? Because we don't listen to our bodies. And so as you can hear, we are in a conundrum as a society to learn to determine when is enough, when do we feel satisfaction, and when do we declare this is it, it's okay, it's okay to be here. Now, hanging out with insufficiency is, I think, from my perspective, a really powerful way to determine our goals. That yes, by the way, I think it's absolutely okay that we measure things also with material things. Absolutely. But not only with that. So I have a story for you. And this story has to do with learning to the free, to learning the difference, the distinction between being and doing. Because in my experience, when you learn the difference, when you learn the distinction, then being enough is not directly plugged to doing, but to being. Okay, so here it comes. Many years ago, I was invited to be part of this large conference in South America, and I was there. And as I was walking to my from the hotel to the venue, which it was a few blocks away from 
my hotel. It was early in the morning and I was seeing it was a two-way street divided by a median. And there were two street working people dressed with their orange suits and a hat and a broomstick and this big garbage bin. And they were both cleaning the streets on opposite sides of the street. Okay? One of them was clearly annoyed at the task. He was, oh my gosh, and cursing. And as he was brooming and gathering, collecting leaves and dust and all that, he was complaining about the task. I kept walking. On the other side of the street, another person with the same tools, same uniform, same broomstick. That person was whistling like <whistles> happily brooming. So take a look at this. Take a picture of that moment. Two people doing the same, doing the same, being differently. That informs us that you can be, you can do the same, but you also have the ability of doing that from a different place that is most and more fulfilling and sufficient. Or you can do the same task, complaining and feeling miserable. And guess what? That is upon you because we are human. We are always at choice. And that choice, that internal choice, the either whistling or complaining, having happy thoughts or cursing is only and solely yours. No one else can do that for you. So how does, how do we measure success, satisfaction? Well, today, we measure that by doing. But in that example I just gave you, I think success is being able to smile as you work. Even if your job is tough, like cleaning the streets on a really busy city. Yeah. Learning to smile in the morning before you say goodbye to your family because you know you have a really tough work day ahead of you, but knowing that gifting them a smile makes an entire difference to them, makes a difference. So from there, we can start exploring that being enough, as opposed to insufficient, is something that we can actually learn when we challenge our cultural discourses, I'm not saying changing, I'm saying challenging. When we challenge that our measurement for success is by doing and not being, once again, I'm not saying doing is wrong. I think it's also really good to be able to write a check to pay your mortgage or buy that amazing jacket that you want. But that is not only the way in which you are going to Feel full. Fulfillment is an interesting word because literally comes from that feeling full and knowing when to stop. When is enough? And so one of the things that happened before, beyond, way beyond material success, when we learn to be enough and become successful becoming successful instead of doing things to be successful is that three things may appear for you in that on that path the first one is you may find inspiration easier it's easier to find inspiration when you find yourself recognizing that your job is challenging but but that is your responsibility to change the attitude towards that. Inspiration because when we inspire literally and we recognize that we have another day to 
become what we want, what we've been dreaming of, or what we like to generate in the world, that is so absolutely fantastic. Just the idea of having another day is so huge. Think about the, so many people who are on a hospital bed, not able to do what you're doing right now, listening to a podcast, and maybe you are you are on public transportation or walking or jogging or... That is fantastic. So that's why inspiration is critical when you learn to be enough. <clears throat> Excuse me. The second one is creativity. And we become absolutely and way more creative when we acknowledge that fulfillment comes from an internal place where we let our gifts and talents flow instead of fighting them and pretending that the only way in which are going to achieve success is by seeing an amount of zeros in our bank account. And the last one is that when you learn to be enough, you be begin also to trust in yourself. When we trust ourselves to be able to have certain conversations or to dare to pick up the phone and sell, that is a, an important shift in our brain, in our body chemistry, but also in the way in which we hold our emotions through and through. So when we move beyond material success, we discover those three things inspiration, creativity, and we learn to trust in ourselves. That to me is not a formula and not a recipe, but something for you to explore, something for you to take a look at. Now, on purpose, I'm not giving you the entire or a recipe because I would love to invite you to challenge what I'm saying and test it and see if, say, tomorrow you can go to your job or do your chores at home or have conversations with your team without wanting necessarily to have a tangible result, but a change in mood of your team. Because here's the thing, when you are able to shift the mood of your team, I guarantee you're going to achieve the tangible goal. But if the mood is not the right one to achieve the goal, resistance is going to be the wall that everyone sees besides you. And so I don't know if you can see what I'm trying to offer, but I am offering a door that you can walk through and create from a very different place for the betterment of your, organi your organization and yourself, whether it's personally or professionally. So I like to begin to close. I start to close this episode because in the beginning of it, I shared with you that I was going to read a paper that Bob Donham, a phenomenal teacher and coach who has worked with many organizations and executives in many uh, countries, um, gave on to us when we were doing an amazing training back in 2003 or four, I believe. Um, and he uh, read this paper and First and foremost, I want to give him credit, but also I want you to hear in his words how he is challenging those cultural discourses that I mentioned in the beginning and how he is also inviting you to shift from the doing perspective perspective to the be becoming or being perspective and also how he's inviting you to learn to be enough. So... I will begin. I am enough. I am a human being. 
I am only a human being. I am not Superman or Superwoman. I am not perfect. Perfection is only a game good for suffering. I am not perfect and it's okay because human beings are not perfect. I accept my humanity, which means I need to accept my finitude. I can't know everything. I can't do everything. I do not have forever. And I cannot please everyone. That is life. That's being human. But at the same time, being human has great gifts. I can make requests and I can make promises. I can create new possibilities and make them happen. I can create the future with others. I have a history like any other human being. My history gives me my limits, but also my capabilities and possibilities. It gives me what I care about. It gives me my meaning. I accept my history and look to take care of what I care about. I have vices, but I also have virtues. It is time to accept my vices and accept my virtues. It is time to recognize that the voice in my ear that whispers, you are not enough, it is just an echo from the past, a ghost with no care for me. It is time to recognize that the ghost does not speak the truth, but only a story from an early age, which I can accept or decline. It is time to stop listening to the voice as though it tells the truth and find my own voice. It is time to tell the ghost, shut up, I've grown up. I have my own commitments. I now live from my interpretations I choose, not from unexamined old habits. I now take care of what I care about with dignity and acceptance of the self that I am. I will ground myself in the assertions of what I have accomplished, in the fact of my commitment, and accept my humanity. When people have assess assess assessments, sorry, when people have assessments, as they always do, they are not revealing the truth. They are simply offering me a future which I can accept or decline. I am committed to my center of my dignity and my acceptance of my humanity, as well as my commitment to other people, and I will stay true to that. I'll be open to certain assessments, and I will decline others, and in some communities I will show up as a leader, and in others I won't. People can accept and decline my offers, my standards, my commitments. I'll find people who want to play with me and accept my humanity as well. I declare that I am enough because I am a human being and that is enough. Thanks to life. Robert Dunham I hope, I truly, truly hope that you've enjoyed this episode where its sole purpose is for you to challenge the conversation about insufficiency and hopefully move to a conversation of learning to be enough. As always, please let me know your thoughts and if there's anything I can do for you and your team to learn all these distinctions and topics, please reach out. I'd be happy to be part of that journey with you and your team. Take care. See you next time. 
Thank you for listening Being Lab. You can follow me on social media at Gonzalo Cordova. Please like and follow, and thank you for being here. <laughs>